Article 100 circuit breakers. Okay, so a circuit breaker is a device that opens automatically during overcurrent without damaging itself when properly applied within its rating. We're going to get into the ratings, uh, particularly interrupting rating, a little bit uh, a little bit later on in the series. But suffice it to say that a circuit breaker opens automatically during overcurrent. What's overcurrent? Well, overcurrent is a ground fault or a short circuit or an overload. So any of those three will cause a circuit breaker to open, generally speaking, uh, without damage to itself. If the circuit breaker clears a fault but explodes, well, <laughs> what did we really solve? You know, so uh, without extensive damage to itself. It can also be open and closed manually, unlike a fuse. Okay, so a typical thermal magnetic circuit breaker is what we're looking at here. It has two components. It has the thermal part, which is for overloads. It has the magnetic part, which is for ground faults and short circuits, or we could just call them faults or shorts, whichever one you want to call it. So for the overload part, we have a bimetal, a piece of bimetal, and that is uh, an alloy of two different metals, and it actually changes shape when it reaches a certain amount of heat. So if you can imagine uh, just a really thin piece of copper wire, uh, maybe one of the strands in like a, a, a Cat6 cable or something, even smaller than that, if you were to hold that underneath a lighter for a significant amount of time, eventually that wire is going to change shape, isn't it? As it starts to get hot, it will change shape. That's what happens inside of a circuit breaker for the thermal overload part. It's a slow temperature rise, it persists for a long duration, and it actually will change the shape of the bimetal and cause the contacts to open. So that's how we get the thermal overload protection part of a circuit breaker. And then once it cools down, uh, the bimetal, uh, you know, we can reclose it, the bimetal will go back to its original shape. And of course, if it hasn't cooled down enough, if you plug in 10 hair dryers, trip the breaker, run downstairs and reset it and plug them right back in again, it's gonna trip pretty quickly, isn't it? Because that bimetal has already heated up to a certain point. Uh, if we let it cool down, then we'll, uh, you know, we'll be able to use it for a longer duration before that bimetal changes shape and opens the circuit. The other part that we have works off of magnetism. When we have a ground fault or a short circuit, that is a massive amount of current. Um, often in the thousands of amps, usually in the thousands of amps. So we have this massive, uh, you know, expanding and collapsing magnetic field, and that causes the contacts to open as well. So we have the, uh, the magnetic portion over here, and we have the overload protection down here. Thermal magnetic circuit breaker provides protection against overloads, ground faults, and short circuits. Most circuit breakers that we install, at least in residential and in small commercial, and, and plenty of these even in large industrial facilities, would be what we call non-adjustable circuit breakers. And that's precisely what it sounds like. It's a, it's a circuit breaker that can't be adjusted, right? A breaker that cannot be adjusted to alter the time that it takes to open or the current that it takes to initiate its operation. All right, so this circuit breaker works off of a concept called an inverse time uh, curve and we're going to talk about that in the next slide but if I give it 40 amps of current will it trip the answer should be no a circuit breaker according to UL 489 for molded case circuit breaker should be able to hold its handle rating for an indefinite length of time without tripping in fact for a 40 amp circuit breaker I believe it has to hold 135 percent of its rating for an, for an indefinite period of time under test conditions so if I put 40 amps on that circuit breaker, it shouldn't open. If I put 50 amps on it, it will open, but it will take a while to open. Because 50 amps on a 40 amp circuit, uh, that's certainly not good, but it's not going to, you know, there, there's not going to be fireballs and, and everything else happening. If I put 4,000 amps on a 40 amp breaker, uh, that is going to be fireballs and everything else. So we need it to open very, very quickly. So a non-adjustable breaker, we cannot adjust the time that it takes to open or the current that it takes to initiate that operation. So 
we look at the definition of an inverse time circuit breaker. I'm, I'm kind of going out of order on some of these definitions, but they're all under Article 100. So an inverse time circuit breaker is what we all have installed, you know, hundreds or thousands of in our career. That's a circuit breaker whose trip time decreases as the current increases. All right, so a regular old molded case circuit breaker works on the principle of inverse time. So on the right, we have what we call an inverse time characteristic curve. So this is how fast it will open based on how much current it receives. So going up to down is the time and going left to right is current. And I need to point out that when you look at a time current characteristic curve, they're printed on logarithmic paper. And, and what that means is it's not to scale. The distance between one and two is not the same distance as two and three or three and four. You can see that it goes one, two, three, and then 10 and 15 and 20. And the reason for that is if we wanted to do it to scale, we would need a piece of paper that, that quite literally was a mile long. So we use a logarithmic piece of paper to show it. So this is current on the bottom shown in multiples of the circuit breaker's handle rating or long time pickup rating. This is rated 20 amps. A multiple of one would be 20 amps. So if I put 20 amps on it, how long does it take to open? Well, I already said it shouldn't open. So as I go up for the time, this curve just flattens out. It goes up forever because it's not supposed to trip at its rating. Now, if I show that breaker two times its rating, or 40 amps, I can follow the time current characteristic curve, and I go up here to the bottom, and the fastest that it would open, which we call the minimum unlatching, uh, the minimum unlatching time, the fastest would be what? 10 seconds. The slowest that it would open would be up here, and that is 120 seconds. So if I put 40 amps on a 20 amp breaker, Will it trip? Yes, somewhere between 10 seconds and two minutes. Now that may seem like an eternity, but if you put 40 amps of current on a 20 amp wire for two minutes, it's probably not gonna hurt anything. We don't wanna do it any longer than that, certainly. But for two minutes, that copper's not gonna melt. The insulation's not gonna fail, right? So we can, we can deal with a little bit of range here. So that is an inverse time current curve. Now, of course, if I show this breaker 10 times its rating, which would be what, 200 amps, now we're starting to get into the magnetic part of the circuit breaker. We're no longer on the bimetal thermal overload part, we've moved to the magnetic part. And that's where we start measuring things not in seconds, but in cycles or fractions of a cycle if it's a current limiting or current device. So 200, we can look down here and it'll be, you know, somewhere around 0.002 seconds. So you get the idea. Circuit breaker whose time, trip time decreases as current increases. That's our inverse time circuit breaker. We also have what we call an adjustable circuit breaker. We have non-adjustable breakers, but we also have adjustable breakers. And that would be a circuit breaker that can be set to trip at various times, current values, or both. So here you've got the adjustments on this circuit breaker. There are a few of them but mainly we would have the long time pickup rating, which is, you know, if, if you, this is, this is a 2000 amp frame. If I wanted to call this a 1200 amp breaker, I'm protecting a 1200 amp circuit with 1200 amp wire, then I would adjust what? My long time pickup rating to 1200 amps. Okay, so I would say that's, the, that's what I want it to trip at, that's my long time pickup. What you can do with an adjustable trip circuit breaker is you manipulate what this curve looks like, okay? So you, put, you set the long time pickup to the rating and that should handle it forever, right? That's what it would be completely vertical on the time current characteristic curve. And then we can set up the pickup time, right? The ramp on how fast, uh, on how fast we want to trip as it approaches that or, or gets beyond that current, not as it approaches it, but as it gets beyond that current uh, we can change the ground fault protection. We can change all sorts of different settings on an adjustable trip circuit breaker. I'm going to do a video one of these days uh, and just cover the settings on an adjustable trip circuit breaker. So I don't want to spend too much time 
on this video because again this is just for definitions right so an adjustable trip circuit breaker circuit breaker that we can adjust what the trip points and the trip times so we're adjusting the time current curve that's what we adjust on an adjustable trip circuit breaker we also have an instantaneous trip circuit breaker now an instantaneous trip circuit breaker it is not something that we use uh, in a general application, it's not something you're going to find in your house. This is a circuit breaker that does not have an intentional delay in its opening time. Okay, so all it does is when it hits 70 amps, it trips, right? There's no intentional delay in its order. It doesn't really have a current curve because it's not an inverse time current circuit breaker. It's just an instantaneous trip circuit breaker. So when it hits the opening time, there is, no, uh, there is no intentional delay. The last one is setting of a circuit breaker. Pretty obvious, that's the value of current or time or both that an adjustable trip breaker is set to trip. This is a term that we use in section 240.6C where we talk about the adjustable trip circuit breaker. If I have a 2000 amp frame and I can adjust the trip point from let's say 800 amps up to 2000 amps, well, if I can adjust it, what size wire do I need? Do I have to pull wire based on the worst case and the, and the 2,000 amps? Or can I size wire based on the actual adjustments? Well, that's something that's handled in 240.6C. And the answer is, as long as we have restricted access to the adjustment mechanisms, then the setting is considered the rating, okay? So this piece of plastic covering the settings is in and of itself restricted access. So the fact that I have this plastic over this means that whatever my settings are, that is the rating of the breaker and that's how I would size my, my, well, my conductors and my equipment and everything else. So those are your circuit breaker definitions in Article 100.